Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Today is September 16th, and President Joe Biden announced that the United States is joining the Paris Climate Accord, something that, that Donald Trump pulled us out of several years ago. And that I would say that the fact that we're we're joint we're back in is a really good thing. The only problem is it never had any chance of of making it. And the reason for it is especially during this time period is because for the same reason world peace has never come. Uh, the world leaders get together and they 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 never seem to sit down to come up with a treaty. They never seem to come up with an agreement. They did come up with the climate accords, the Paris climate accords, which is great, except, you know, coming up with that, it seems like, okay, we're all going to go home now. And, you know, then you have to go home and work with the people that are back home again, and it isn't going to work. And it, it's the same thing with world peace. We've been, the people have been all waiting for peace to come. And it what didn't happen until half the population of the of the pop of the mankind, half the population of the planet, had to pray for world peace for it to come, and then then a plan was introduced. Okay, so now we have we've backed ourselves into the corner. These are the end times, basically the beginning of a new cycle, and and the right now there's this big schism that's happened that's separated people into four groups: the people who stand on the principles the people who are in it for the money, the people and the people whose lives are affected, and then the people who function for their own interests. So the people whose lives are affected, they don't normally run for office. The people who stand on the principles, let's say we have we have the government um, in of the United States, we're dividing it into, let's say the Democrats are standing on the principles, the Republicans are in it for the money and power, the, the average people are not in it, but, but then you have the people who function for their own interests. Those people are 180 degrees from where they think they are. They're the ones who start rebellions. So you can say that Donald Trump and his supporters basically are in it for their own interests. They're the ones who basically believe the lies and and they're in it. So, so let's say we have the United States, but the whole world is that way. So 25% of the population so let's say the Democrats, the Republicans, and the people, let's say like Donald Trump and Steve Bannon and his supporters are that last group. So now if you look at it as like the American Revolution, the people like John Adams and uh, Patrick Henry, they had to start a whole war. The whole thing happened and it wasn't until... <clears throat> So they saw the dark cloud on the horizon. How many people see the dark cloud on the horizon? It was Al Gore who saw the dark cloud on the horizon a long time ago. But how many people made fun of him? How many people put him down? How many people listened to him? How many people actually paid attention to him? <clears throat> so basically what we have is this big, long movement idea, an evolution to the revolution, so to speak, that we're... 25%, but then what you have is within the Republican Party and the Democrat Party, you have the people who stand on the principles, the people who are grabbing for power, the people whose lives are affected, and then the people who function for their own interests. So you have, there's only, right now, there are only two people on the planet who recognize the potential of the plan for world peace. After all these years, two people on the planet who see it. Al Gore saw the need for climate change and he said something about it. How many people at that time saw the need for climate change work? And what did he have to do to make it happen? It, this is an existential threat that we're facing right now and nobody's willing to do anything about it. It's like, you know, the, the old saying, if you, if you had a war and nobody showed up, then, you know, there would be no more wars, but that's not the case. If you had world peace and nobody showed up, see, it takes every person on the planet to get their life. By the end of this time period, that where for world peace to come, <clears throat> and that's why it's taken so long. 
We could have had world peace a long time ago. Jesus of Nazareth was called the Prince of Peace. He, we could have had world peace 2,000 years ago. We could have had it over and over and over again, and people just don't see the potential. So let's say this. The, <clears throat> the change has to come from within the, the people when the people are ready for change to occur. When people actually stand up and make it happen. When people start demanding change. So let's say the government is playing power games and we're in the abyss. So are we in the abyss yet of this, if you know, existential threat kind of thing? Does anybody see the existential threat? How about how about global war coming out? Okay, now, how many people have solutions to their problems? How many people actually see people write letters to the senators and the president, and you know, you can't get through to them. You can't get through. That's that's where we are now is you just can't they don't listen they have their own agenda they and then when they say you're not, they're not listening you have to have a huge amount of people before they'll pay attention the only time they listen is when they're running for office and then they still don't listen because they have their own agenda they're not going to listen so what has to happen is the solution has to be coming from the people before they will actually listen. So now, this is what I'm going to recommend that we do. It's instead of relying on the US government to join the Paris Climate Accords and come up with the, uh, the things and then enact all the legislation and all the stuff again that has to be done, to stop and think about what exactly has to happen for that, for the, for the change. Okay, we need to have a situation where they, the world leaders say, I am dealing with this by turning it over to somebody who can deal with it. We have, we have solutions to all the problems. The people have the solutions, but we don't have a voice. That's what the problem is. We cannot break through the resistance of the voice. People do million people march and they have no voice. The government goes on doing whatever they want to do, and it's even harder in, in, uh, under um, dictatorships because, because they don't have any voice. How about where in a, in a monarchy where the king or queen has complete power of life or death over someone and owns everything? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that things can't change, but there has to be a reason for change, a rationale for change. And even existential threats, because because we're dealing with several existential threats right now and the government. How about the global genocide that's devolving? They don't have a protocol for ending genocides. So what we have to do is we have to introduce information, but we have to first set up like a, a structure, an international structure that allows them to turn responsibility over to that. Okay, so now... Uh, in the past, what they did, um, like in Greece, uh, in the in the biblical times, they had prophets, and the prophets would would build up a following, and then like Jesus was a prophet, and he would build up a following, and then what would happen is they'd be speaking for for the word of God, and God would be like like Zeus with lightning bolts was going to come down and get you, and God doesn't judge people; God just Let's us figure out for self. When we pray for peace, um, that's what our prayer circle did. We prayed for peace and we got a plan. Okay? But then the Archangel Michael told us the difference between heaven and hell is that in heaven there's a solution to your problem. So now, to drag everybody out of hell, basically we have to have a solution to all the problems. Okay? Don't expect the government to come up with solutions because as they get into this situation, their perspective has narrowed and narrowed to the point where they only see two options and both of them are untenable. So what we have to do is come from outside and then introduce information, but also have a plan. And that's what we have now is the plan to help us get out of the insufficient issues that we have at the Paris Climate Accord. The UN doesn't have a way to end genocides 
because they don't have the mandate to do it. There's The charter has five flaws, five main flaws that make it impossible for the UN to function. We can't turn our lives over to somebody who can't help us solve problems. So this is what we do now, is we create a plan the plan for the international government where everybody's involved with the creation of it. Everybody has a voice. Nobody's left out. We're joining the debate. If we have to do something, it's kind of like with Patrick Henry, the the the, the delegates to the uh, Constitutional Convention basically got together and they decided, hey, this is really good. And then Patrick Henry let's say he filibustered it, and he said, said, hmm, wait a minute, we forgot individual rights, the rights of the people. Do the people have any rights in this government? He said, well, I suppose, but why do we even have to talk about that? Okay, see, they didn't see it. That's what we have now, is they don't see what the situation is. They have their own agendas. They have their own issues. The people who are focused on the principles, the problem with it is, now think about that for a minute. If you have a situation where this is like evolution to the revolution, what happens is the person who has the principles, every time he or she stands on the principles, the people who function based on power will put them down. And we're seeing that with Republicans. Hey, they're putting them down, and then they're going to work. The Republicans, the plan for world peace was introduced under Obama, and the Republicans didn't like it. So what they did was they said, we don't like the plan. We don't want all the countries to be equal. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Donald Trump in because he functions for his own interests. He said, if we get somebody who functions for his own interests, then we can control him, basically, or whatever. And then, I don't know what everybody was thinking, but you got people grabbing for power, and then Donald Trump, and he's he's this guy who's the reality TV show guy. You know, our, our country is has been going through weird things lately, and we all know about it, but didn't have any way to change it. You know, we're, it's kind of like waiting for all this stuff to happen, and... We're the ones who are responsible for making our, our own lives happen. We can't turn our lives over to the government. We are responsible for our own lives. 25% of the population, our lives have been affected. And then what happens is you get like the Republicans and the Democrats fighting and then basically then they brought in Trump over here and like let's say the, the father and the mother are fighting. Let's say the father stands on principles. The mother's in it for the money and power. She she wants to be able to wear nice clothes or whatever. And then the kids and then the neighbors or the extended family. So every time the father stands on the principles, the mother goes to all these other, complains to the kids and goes to the other, the other neighbors. And the neighbors interfere. Hey, that's how it works. But then what happens is this. Then... This guy over here, uh, he's also collapsing. So the entire family's co power base collapses. All right. But what happens next is then, then basically they have to start creating their lives and coming out of the crisis situation that, that like everybody pulling different directions, they have to come up with a plan that benefits everyone and everybody has to work together to help to create the life they want. Otherwise, they just separate and it's there's nothing left. The kids don't come back, the mom doesn't come back, the dad doesn't come back, and the neighbors are... They get new neighbors to interfere with or whatever. Okay, so we have a plan for world peace. All they have to do is turn it over over the crisis climate, over to the plan for world peace, the, the international government that we have to work to create. They can solve the problems by just working, turning it over to the international government. Okay, so what happens if all the diplomats in Washington, D.C., who represent their countries, get together at the Institute of Peace and discuss this idea of the climate accords instead of going to Paris and coming up with this idea and we're going to do this. How about they get together and talk about the international government? Because if the existing structure isn't solving the problems, phew, we go down like that. 
if we devolve into a, a let's say power struggle we go down we reach the point where we have three choices and like our the american revolution their flag said join or die so the straight ahead goes like this down is like this down waging war playing the power games that doesn't work um insurgency that doesn't solve any problems um not having solutions doesn't solve problems so now it's time to set, turn everything over to the people the power is shifting to the people because it's because it's up to us to solve the problems okay so this is the plan the plan for the international government creates has americans know what our how our kind uh, government works our constitution we all love the constitution because it's it's a great idea okay it's just what's put into it with the not the not the um it it represents where we are at any moment okay so now if we take universal law that guarantees everybody's unalienable rights to create the life we want without interference we can create the life that we want is going to be guaranteed by the international government so we can work together and we can solve these problems okay we all have solutions we all have problems we have solutions okay so now this is where we go next we support the plan for the international government we join the debate we join that we start solving problems okay that's up to you if you want to create the life you want if you want to get out of the abyss like your family's been torn apart then you climb up out of it i have solutions to all the problems i have if you have you know the root cause of a problem with the planning process you can find a solution and i have channeled a whole bunch of information on the planning process okay so in fact maybe my next video i'm going to sit down and i'm going to write a plan I, well you can find it on the website it basically track our progress in 2012 we had a solution for ending the global genocide the worst case scenario for the planet the second thing was was we had is protecting the unalienable rights the third is so let's say if we're the world would be like coming out of this same thing happens for the whole world but it happens on the individual le le level also if we can apply it on the international level we can apply it in our own lives too how to end character defamation campaigns that are going on making life hell for everybody all right so there the international government will have 11 departments and among them are the departments of the interior the departments of the oceans uh the, let's say the three branches are the same as the it, in the constitution so there'll be the legislative branch the executive branch and the judicial branch and then the 11 departments are going to handle the advisors take all the experts from around the world from each of the countries like the economic issues so there's thinking about we have an economic slowdown because of the pandemic how about we put all the experts from all the countries together in a room and let them solve the problem and all i have to do to solve this problem is to put them in that room make it possible for them to do that just that's all they have to do too they don't have to solve the problem they don't have to do that if they listen to the experts but what happens about the nonprofits and the, the groups like that? Okay, are they listening to the nonprofits? Okay, now, that's where we go now, is we have to have the same situation where we're climbing out of the abyss by working to create this international government that guarantees the rights of every person on the planet to create the life they want without interference, to be treated fairly and equally, to have a voice in their government. Those are the unalienable rights that we're going to start with. And then we're going to talk about a pristine environment. And, but with everybody working together, we have solutions. Everybody has solutions, everybody has problems. And all we have to do is put people together. When, Joe, uh, when Barack Obama, not Joe Biden, when Barack Obama was first in office, he came in running, if you remember, 
came in running to solve the economic crisis that was left over from the Republicans under George Bush. Okay, that the war in Iraq was expensive. Okay, it was expensive. So when he got in office, he came in running. The tax cuts didn't help. You know, it was supposedly a problem. But then what happens is the the there's a way to solve the problems economics. So what he did was he 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 put the board of economics supervisors to work, got them started with kind of like the beginning ideas of it. There was a solution. But then he went out looking for people, and it wasn't until. Um, Medina Jad made an end run and came around and said, how about a plan for an international government that treats all the people like the, under the Constitution, all the countries the same way the states are treated? So if we have the, if we have money, a way to, all they have to do is be considered equal. No country is more important than any, any other country. We are equal under the Constitution. We all have our unannual unalienable rights. Nobody can take them away from us. So now we have the economic departments, we have the the environment, the oceans, uh, the interior, they become stewards of the land. We have the, the um, agriculture. So we have the, the earth covered, we have the economy covered, we have the governments covered, we have the rights of the people. We have other ones like the Department of Defense and the Department of um, Corrections, the like um, like the prisons area too. Uh, we'll we'll be working with that too. The Department of Defense they'll be, they'll be protecting the, de uh, the 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 world basically protecting it, um, having. Instead of pulling all the troops out right away, we can we can set that up, and then we don't have to spend five hundred billion dollars a year on on armaments, and we can just have like the uh, military Olympics to decide who's going to be the winner, and they can take trophies away. Okay, and we'll transition into peace-based thinking, prosperity, peace, and prosperity movement. All right. So that solves a problem. So now the lives of the people, we want to be able to create the life we want without interference. Yeah, with our inalienable rights, I think. If you just leave us alone, we'll be able to do that, won't we? And then, then we have the people who function for their own interests. They can vote on it when it's all over. The, we, every part of this is in covered in on my on the organization website so I ask that you go there and check it out and then come back here and I'll talk about the planning process and we'll we'll cover more of it uh, as it as it keeps going forward it takes every person on the planet to bring world peace and for peace people, half the population prayed for peace and now it can come because the spiritual hierarchy is working with us now they offered us a plan for world peace and now it can come. Everybody, for peace to come, everybody had to be exposed to universal law. And that is where we are kind of now is people are going, I think I can get around that. I, I don't have to believe in that. But that's where our technology inventions come in. I've had this up here. Oh, never mind. I don't have to get that. Basically, what it does is it's we're like a twelve-story program, twelve-story building. Each of us with our twelve chakras, and on the top floor is where Lady Gaia and I am that I am. The male and female aspects of God are. So now, we don't have to worry about the Paris Climate Accords. And we don't have to worry about turning responsibility over the government. It's time for us to join the world peace movement. Okay? It's up to us to solve the problems. Now, that's what we're going to focus on now, and then we'll kind of leave the governments in the dust. We don't have to depend on them. If we turn our lives over to them, they're, they're, just, they're just people like everybody else. We're the ones with the solutions. That's what happened to Barack Obama. He had, he had a problem, and he found his, somebody who had a solution. 
And all I had to do to get him to be aware of this is I had to do an end run around our government. I had to work. I, I sent the, the proposals in to stop the Iraq war in 2003. The first government proposals went in 2003. And then basically went around the corner with a with the diplomatic co community they got government proposals and then it went to the they leveraged it up to the world leaders I, we did an end run on world peace on the governments and now what it is is they can't stop it anymore they, because they don't have solutions to their problems they don't know how to stop the problems anymore it's up to us to do that so now that's where we are right now is it's up to us to take back our power, not to, for an insurgency, but to start solving problems. And we're going to start working on that. Okay, so join the debate, join the world peace movement. Okay, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Your, I've talked about that before. Your sub subscription will will allow us to get start making a little bit more money so we can actually cover postage and things like that so okay join the movement